As we gathered this morning, uh, we are celebrating this special day. Uh, and I, I want to just say one more thing as we get started, then we'll have our prelude. It's this. Uh, every time we gather, uh, there is, it, it, I don't know about you, but sometimes it can seem like we, we kind of get used to the way things are. But you know, there is nothing, nothing normal about our God. God is an amazing God, and he is the one we're here to worship. Our time together, every time we get together, isn't to please us. It is not for our, not for our enjoyment. It is a duty for us to praise and worship God. And so I, there was a song that I heard this morning when I was driving in, and it talked about uh, the body, see, body raising, grave defeating, breaker of chains, or something like that. And I was like, Wow. And I said, that was, it was one of those, uh, some of you might call a rah-rah song about Jesus, but it was one of those that was just like, made me think for a second, is that, you know, I'm in my Sunday morning routine, I'm driving into the office getting ready for worship, but wow, there is nothing ordinary and nothing tame about our God. He does amazing and wonderful things, and he's the one we've gathered today to celebrate, and the one who invites us to this table to receive the gift of grace today. So as we gather today, we have gathered in God's presence. Let us now witness together to our time, to our God, and his amazing work in our life.
please stand as you're able and join me in the call to worship. Every generous act of giving is a tribute to God's love for us. Lord, let us be people of generous and abundant gifts for others. Be ready to listen and slow to react in anger. Prepare us to be peaceful people. Keep our hearts and spirits ready to serve the Lord. Lord, open our hearts to hear and respond to your words of life in the ministries of hope and peace. Amen. Our opening hymn is Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, page 384. Please turn, turn to page 12 in your hymnal for the service of word and table, the confession and part, invitation, confession, and pardon. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly seek to repent of their sin and to seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Um, I'll, I'll, pray, I'll pray in silence for moments. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. God. Amen. On this Healthier 901 Sunday, I wanted to take just a moment and share uh, some, uh, something that's happened since the last time we gathered in this, uh, in this space on this Sunday, this special Sunday of the year. Uh, and I'm going to invite uh, Sally Andrews to come forward. And I also want to show you, she's going to share a couple words and some encouragement. But while she's making her way up, I want to show you uh, this news story that was done on a group from Covenant United Methodist Church that was a re- as a result of our Healthier 901 uh, initiative. Step by step, the folks at Covenant United Methodist Church are doing their part at creating a healthier 901. I was sitting there and I thought, you know, we could start a walking group, and it's happened. Sally Andrews spearheaded the group after her pastor shared the Healthier 901 initiative with the congregation. I've walked for a number of years, and I've kind of gotten out of the habit, and I've told them that it's been kind of a selfish thing that I started on my part because it's gotten me back to walking again. The group meets twice a week at local walking trails, walking 25 minutes in one direction, taking in the views of Mother Nature before turning around to walk another 25 minutes to their cars. And though the group may be small, we can do it. The spirit is mighty. If you take care of your body, you'll have a greater quality of life. Daniel and Liz Dover jumped at the opportunity to get their bodies moving. I don't like exercising alone, although I did during COVID. But having a group to be with makes it much more fun. Methodist Labonner says heart disease and cancer are the top causes of death in Shelby and DeSoto counties. Just another reason why many in this walking group say prioritizing your health is critical. Doing any kind of fitness routine is the best medicine in the world. Not a, it's, and it's not just about the weight, it's about the overall, overall health. In Memphis, Ariana Poindexter, Action News 5. Good morning, church. I'd like to begin with a shout out to my fellow walkers. And can you believe that we will have our one year anniversary in October? So we have kept it going. As you heard, as you heard on the video clip, some of the best medicine is having a fitness routine. But in our case, it's a walking routine to walk. We have, are having a group makes it much more enjoyable and also provides the needed motivation. I would like to encourage you to come join our group or maybe you could even start your own group at a time that's convenient for you. Our group meets on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 9 o'clock at different locations along the Wolf River Germantown Greenway. If you're not familiar with the Greenway, it's located along Wolf River Boulevard and Humphreys Boulevard. And let me just say, if you've never been on the Greenway, I encourage you to do it because it's an awesome community asset. It would make you proud to be a Memphian. One of our um, church's mission motives is that we're better together. We thrive when we have a tribe. And I just have to say that I love our tribe of walkers. So if you feel motivated to walk with a great group of people, you can reach out to me or contact the church office. This Tuesday, we will meet at the parking lot on Wolf River Boulevard and Kirby Parkway. It's just, the parking lot's just west of the light at Kirby and Wolf River Boulevard. So we'd love for you to join us, and I'll have to say, let's um, get out and walk, Covenant. It's great for your health. And I bet if you just wanted to meet up with them to see what the Greenway is about, they'd still let you walk with them just to see the Greenway, right? Is that okay, Sally? Will you let tourists come and walk with you? Absolutely. That's wonderful. We're so grateful for, for your witness and, uh, and for sharing that. Uh, when I asked Sally to do that, um, she sent a very not happy emoji to me. Um, 
<laughs> well, this morning, as we continue our time in worship, um, let us now turn uh, as we prepare to receive our offering. And, and, and let me rephrase that, as we prepare to worship through our giving. Uh, it's, it's one of the things that we do every time we gather. We sing, we pray, uh, we hear scripture and hear a word spoken to inspire us. Um, and scripture tells us to enter into his gates with praise. And we typically do that pretty well here at Covenant. Um, because God has created us to give him praise and to glorify him. Worship is natural for people who consider themselves to be Christian. In fact, not worshiping as a Christian is almost like not breathing. It's that important. And so as we turn now, we are continuing to do this and offer our praise and thanksgiving through uh, our giving and our through, uh, giving as an act of offering through our worship. Excuse me, I'll get these words right eventually. Uh, get them all turned around in my head sometimes. Psalm 96, 8 says, Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name and bring an offering and come into his courts. And our offering is not an interruption to worship. It's actually a part of it. And so as our ushers are going to come forward in just a moment, and we're going to hear a beautiful offertory played, this is also a very important time in which we do indicate to God that we are giving back a portion of what God has blessed us with because we too are, we are blessed and we are blessed to be a blessing. And one of the ways that we do that is by, uh, by generosity, not only to our church but also to the people around us. So now let us focus our hearts and minds upon God as we uh, give back a portion of all that God has given to us in worship to him and in furtherance of his mission through our church. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks and praise for this day as we gather to worship. Uh, this is simply a, a, a very vital part of our time together. A very vital part of our life of following your son Jesus is that we learn uh, to be generous and give of our time and energy and creativity just as he did. It's not that we just think the right things or say the right things, it's that we also do the right things. That is very important to our life as disciples of Jesus. We thank you, and so part of our thanks and our thanksgiving that we offer to you today is through the gifts that we have received and that we give back to you. Everything that we have is yours. We are stewards and managers of that. We pray that you would continue to bless us and that we would continue to bless you in return for all of your goodness and all that you have done for us. We enter into your courts with thanksgiving. We give praise and give glory to all you've done. And now we bring an offering to you in the courts of your church. May this offering be a blessing uh, to our ongoing ministry. And may it be multiplied for what you are calling us and how you are calling us to be your church in this day and age. And it's in Christ's holy name we pray all these things and give you thanks. Amen. Oh. 
reading from 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 through 24. But we appeal to you, brothers and sisters, to have respect for those who labor among you and to have charge over you in the Lord and admonish you, esteem very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves, and we urge you, beloved, to admonish the idlers, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with all of them, see that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seek to do the good to one another and to all. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of the prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. When the calls you is faithful, and he will do this. Word of God for the people of God. God. You may be seated. Today, as I mentioned in the opening, is Healthier 901 Sunday. Also, uh, thank you again, Sally, for uh, sharing and encouraging uh, all of us. Um, it was pretty neat to see uh, some of our covenant folks on the news, and uh, we were just uh, uh, excited for that witness. And uh, I hope that you know, although we only celebrate this once a sun, one year, one time a year, um, I want you to know that that health is important, um, and you all know this uh, because if you're like me, you get up in the morning and the first thing you do is complain about your body. <laughs> Like, oh, oh me, I don't know. But that's a, I, I, I joke a little bit, but that's, that's a serious thing. And today we're going to talk about a little bit how, why it is important to our faith that we take care of our bodies. In much of recent history in the Western world, we've cozied up to what might be considered an incomplete gospel of sorts. You may be wondering what in the world that I am referring to exactly, but that's the point of this sermon today, was to address that, to bring attention to a, a more robust, a wholesome theology or understanding of what salvation is for our lives. Because the things that we do have eternal implications for our bodies and our minds and our souls. Now, even though many of us may be mindful or you may remember how we quote unquote did this last year and we don't have to do it again because we've already done it and already had this conversation, I would say you probably hadn't been to church much because that's all we do every Sunday is talk about the same messages from Jesus and his same teachings and we try to do it in a different way every time so that hopefully that there might be something special or different or we might find ourselves in a different place where the Holy Spirit is speaking to us to actually make a change in our lives. My hope every time I grace the pulpit, isn't just that everybody leaves feeling good. It's that I do what I can and hope the Holy Spirit does what the Holy Spirit does to speak to you so that you may leave and do that different thing or be in that different way that God is calling you to be so that you may fully, fully Embrace his life as your own. Growing to perfection, as we have heard it called. And so it's interesting because last year about this time, we had a similar, uh, a similar message, similar sermon. I didn't rewrite this first one. This is completely different. Uh, I'm not testing you to see if you paid attention last year or if you were even here. 
But we want to be mindful because sometimes when we get into classes and we get into studies and even when we hear a sermon, it's interesting because when we hear something and we talk about it, there's something within us that also makes us feel like we've done something about it, right? Uh, we, we've talked about that with our spiritual habits as well. It's not just enough to talk about it or to know about it. The point is, is that, the, that the conversation and discussion and the knowledge makes it into the actions and behaviors of our life. And so the thing, that thing is true for us today. While we may feel like we know it's important and we should be healthy and we should make better decisions, Lord knows I am the chief sinner amongst us in that, in that vein. Last year when we started Healthier 901, the goal is to get healthier lifestyles into the people of our community. And one of the ways that we're doing is just trying to be leaders in this ourselves because the goal is to lose one million pounds, and no, we are nowhere near that. There were so many. Um, there were some rollout, some bobbles on the front end. Of, I know many of you signed up on the app, and the app wasn't connected to the program. Well, good news is they've changed all of that, and you can actually go and download a healthier 901 app that is all integrated. I think last year it was just in a hurry to get everything out and there were some things and, and Methodist uh, uh, Laboner Healthcare learned some things in the process. And so we can, we can now do that. So if you don't have the Healthier 901 app, go in the app store and get that. Because one of the things that it does is track our weight loss. I'm, can I be honest with you? When we did this last year, I gained seven pounds. I gained seven pounds. And then about f four or five months ago, I, I started trying to actually do something about that because that was the heaviest I've ever been in my life. I've been working with my doctor because some medications that I take influence and impact that as well. And, and so today, I actually am a little bit lower. I'm actually 10 pounds down from where I was last year at this time. And the whole point of it was, it wasn't because of one message, it was because of a whole lot of work that was done over the last 12 months, or particularly the last five or six. And it was, had a lot to do with the people around me doing this. And I'll, I'll be honest, uh, Jennifer sitting right back there in the back, she started it. And I was like, well, if she's doing it, I need to do it too because I know that I need to take care of myself. And so she, was, she inspired me, and she, we also encourage one another. So that's why being together matters when we do this work. That's why the walking group is so great, because you get encouragement when you're doing it with the people around you. There are fewer things that are more important than your well-being, your health in this world but there's still something about it that makes it truly challenging for us to attend to. It makes us challenging. It makes it challenge for us to truly change our lives and our habits. And, and I think, I, I'm not depersonalizing this at all. We can say it's our decisions. We can say it's this and that, but I truly believe it's the attraction of sin. Now, I know y'all don't hear me talk about sin just a whole lot, but I think it has something to do with how sin has touched our lives that keeps us from changing and making the changes that are best for us. Because I can't think of anything about, I, I can't think of anything that would, uh, that would keep us from the best life that we could possibly live other than sin. Now, you might be surprised to hear me say that, but here's the reason. Here's the reason I say that. It's because e even if you look at studies, there are, there's a reason why 70% of people who have heart attacks do not make a measurable change in their lifestyle after having a heart attack. And 50% actually don't include or incorporate one new healthy habit at all. Why? Why? Well, we can come up and say, oh, well, we're lazy. Oh, we got, I think it's just because 
there's a sinful part in us that doesn't want to change and be full. And I think there are, there are voices and encouragements in our life that keep us satisfied the way we are that may not be the holiest of voices to listen to. Maybe Charles Wesley was right and he was on to something when he wrote the hymn that we sang a few minutes ago. Love's, dis- love's divine, all love's excelling. Maybe we do have a bent to sinning that needs to be taken away and only happens by the grace of God. And, and that incomplete gospel that I talked about earlier, it, it may have a, lot, a little bit to do with our, even our theology to lead us to think that whatever happens to our bodies doesn't really matter because we're going to get new ones. After all, Paul the Apostle said something like that. And we have to be careful. We have to be careful. Because while our bodies... While that may be, our bodies may be temporary, it doesn't mean that they are disposable. I'm going to say that again. While our bodies may be temporary, it does not mean that they are disposable. Paul says of our bodies that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. If the Spirit dwells within you, then your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Are you taking care of your temple? It's intriguing to think that Paul, in his letter to the Thessalonian church, challenged the church in this way. I know you may be thinking, how did he challenge the church? I must have missed that part. Because he talked about several things that we all needed to hear this morning. But he says... May your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But see, at the time, they were of the belief that Jesus' return was imminent. And so Paul was telling the church to keep your spirit, soul, and body sound and blameless. But you know, Maybe that's something for us to do even if we don't believe Jesus' coming is imminent as if it's coming tomorrow for all we know. I bet I can make a case for us to do that. How many of us have sound and blameless bodies, minds, and souls? Some of you may remember a little thing called the hokey pokey. Does anybody remember the hokey pokey? It's been around for 200 years, more or less. Actually, it was. It was a, it's a great little ditty. It started at a, as a British folk dance, dating back with variants all the way back to the 1820s. It was a, an accompanying dance and song that really is a participatory dance that people did together. Y'all know how it goes. Sing it with me. You put your right. All right. Very good. You see, the song is a participatory dance, but you know, it's funny about that song is that it actually resembles, uh, resemble, um, modes of participation and commitment in our life. Even theologically, even having to do with our life of following Jesus. Paul is encouraging the church, he didn't just say, take care of the spiritual aspects and take the physical ones out. He included the physical because what happens to our bodies is a spiritual matter. Just because our bodies may be temporary doesn't mean that they are disposable. There remains an expectation in Scripture that we care for our bodies because our bodies are a gift from God. Our bodies are a gift from God. They are the vessel that we have been given to carry out God's mission in this world. 
Now think of it that way. That the best tool that you have for following Jesus and his mission and ministry is the body that you have now. Do we treat our bodies as they are important to God? Do we treat them as if they are important to us? We can certainly pick and choose how we give our lives to God. It can resemble the hokey pokey sometimes where we're in and we're out and we're in and we're shaking it all about. Sometimes with this area of our life, what God wants us to do is just to be all in. All the time. But God's patient. God will let us take it out. But the only person that hurts is ourselves. Kind of like a parent, some lessons can only be learned by letting your child do that thing that they want to do. Even when we know the consequences are not good. I think God does that for us sometimes. There is a way that we are created to live and love and God has shown us, but we just want to do our own thing so God lets us and allows us to experience the consequences of those actions, of that sin. And we live in a world where those consequences have been rippling for ages, which is... One of the reasons why, you know, some, some diseases and some sicknesses we just simply cannot help. No amount of exercise is going to take something, some sicknesses away. However, if we could take better care of ourselves, maybe there would be fewer of them. Our bodies are a gift from God and our bodies do keep score. That's actually the title of a book sharing the research on trauma and the relationship to how we remember things that happened to us because the body, we might not remember them in our mind, but our body does keep score. We're responsible to care and to keep our bodies sound and blameless. Even if the hinges are creaking, Even if there's pain in the back every time we've been over. You see, that is the charge that Paul gave to the church to keep your soul, keep your body, keep your mind sound and blameless. And that's really, when we think about Healthier 901, it is a community initiative, but it is something that we really should take seriously as the church. Take seriously this effort to care for our whole selves, body, mind, and spirit. Because if the Holy Spirit lives within us, as I said earlier, as Paul says, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. How shall you care for your temple? Maybe it's not always about the pounds. Maybe it's not always about your BMI or your VO2 or your BP. Maybe it's just about your whole self, your holy self, putting away the hokey pokey or the holy pokey and thrive in the way that God intends. The physical impacts the spiritual. Things that we do or don't do for our body impacts our souls. It's one of the things I really appreciate about John Wesley. He held that salvation was just not spiritual, but it was physical as well. Salvation has a physical dimension. That's why he wrote a little book called The Primitive Physic, which is a book of... um, 
remedies and recommendation and, and general wisdom that he would publish himself and distribute among the poor because there was no health care for people who were poor. They could not afford a doctor. Jesus says that the thief comes to rob, steal, and destroy. Sounds a lot like what unhealth does to our life too. But he also says, I've come so that they may have life and have it abundantly. That little piece that Paul writes to the Thessalonian church is also a relevant encouragement for us today. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. May your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Now we go to a very real physical aspect of our life together that we know as the Lord's Supper. Uh, this is a table that Jesus said. It's not just a spiritual table. You know, if it were, there were certain parts of early Christianity that said, basically, if it was even uh, real or if it was really important to God, then it was only spiritual. There was nothing physical to it. And yet God created a very physical world in which we inhabit. And when Jesus had this meal with his disciples, he had a very physical meal, tangible things like bread and wine that he shared with his disciples. And so today as we celebrate, we celebrate this very tangible meal, a tangible sign of an inward and spiritual grace that is imparted to us when we take of his body and his blood. Then we, when we receive this bread and this juice, it is as if we are taking his life into our own. And the goal is, is that uh, if, if, we, if I can be a little crude about it, is that you are what you eat, right? We talk about that once upon a time. And then we partake in the life of Christ. The idea in a very crude sense is that we would take his life into ours, that he would become us and we would become him. So I encourage you, invite you to remember that this morning as we approach the, gospel, the, the table this morning. We'll be sharing in the great thanksgiving. You can find that in your hymnal. The words will also be available for you on the screen. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed in us your image, formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through your prophets who look for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. When nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach the good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, and he broke it, offered it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you do in remembrance of me. 
And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now let us pray with the confidence of the children of God, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I would invite those who are assisting this morning and serving uh, to come forward. They will be served first, followed by uh, the uh, choir um, and musicians. And we will then uh, invite you to come forward to receive this gift of grace. You'll proceed down the center aisle. Uh, you can stay and pray at the chancel rail here. Uh, as you return, there are receptacles on either side. You can place your, pl your communion cup in there. Uh, also, I want to remind you that our communion offering this Sunday is for Project Transformation, so all monies left on the chancel rail this morning uh, will go directly to Project Transformation. Uh, once everyone has filed through the line, uh, if you have a desire or need to be served at your seat, uh, once everybody's filed through the line, if you'll just simply raise your hand and our communion servers will be happy to extend the table to where you're seated this morning. Body of Christ, given for you. Body of Christ. blood of Christ shed for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. The table is set. Please come receive this gift of grace.
This morning we'll have a departure from our uh, scheduled programming. Uh, if you, I want to invite you to stand for the benediction this morning. I do want to let you know that our song of blessing will be verse 1 of number 600, uh, Wonderful Words of Life. Uh, the words will be available for you on the screen, so immediately following the benediction, uh, I invite you to join as we sing our song of blessing. Receive this benediction this morning. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face to look upon you and give you peace. Go today, inspired by the Holy Spirit, moved by the work of God in your life, empowered to live faithfully as disciples of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.